Have you got a favorite tomato that you just love to grow from seed? It's very simple to save your own tomato seeds. This video will give you the steps. Hello, this is Stephen from ShortSeasonGarden.com and I offer tips and tricks for gardening in any climate, but especially for short seasons like here in Zone 3 in Eastern Canada. So subscribe to my channel, give my video a thumbs up and a comment, and check me out on social media on Instagram or Facebook at Short Season Garden. As suggested in the intro, it is very easy and cost effective to save your own tomato seeds. There are just a few important things you need to know. For best results, save only seeds from open pollinated plants, many of which are considered heirloom varieties because of their long history. A lot of modern tomato varieties are hybrids or crosses between two varieties. While you can certainly save seeds from hybrids and plant them, you have no guarantee what the offspring will be. Though tomato plants, for the most part, are self-pollinated, bees can carry pollen from one plant to another, up to 100 feet. If you have an heirloom that is really important to you, or if you plan to market the seeds, you should maintain a distance between tomato varieties and plant another flowering crop between. If you have several varieties of tomatoes close together and you are really concerned about seed integrity, put blossom bags over a few blossoms, pollinate them by hand, and save seeds only from those tomatoes. So here is the process. It is really quite simple. Pick several of your best open pollinated tomatoes and make sure they are fully ripe. The first and obvious step is to cut open the tomatoes and remove the seeds. There are several ways to do this. You can simply cut the tomato into sections as you would an orange, and then take a spoon or even your finger to remove the seeds together with the gel surrounding them. While this method works fine, it leaves the remaining tomato somewhat mangled and hard to use in a sandwich although you could certainly use it in a salad or for preserving. If you want to slice the remaining tomato into a sandwich, consider cutting the tomato in two at the equator. And again, use a spoon or your finger to remove the seeds and surrounding gel into a container. Keep in mind that a lot of the tomato's good taste is in the seeds and surrounding juices, so some flavor will be sacrificed. You will notice that each seed is surrounded by a protective gel. Nature's way of spreading tomato seeds is to have animals eat the tomatoes and release the seeds in their feces. The seed must have a protective coating or it would never survive the digestive tract of an animal. Our job now is to remove that gel coating so that the seeds will be able to germinate. We do this by the fermenting process. It is important to collect as much of the gel and the juices surrounding the seeds as possible to help with the fermenting process. If you are only collecting a few seeds from one or two small tomatoes, you probably won't have enough fluid, so you may have to add some water to the mix. Loosely cover the jar. You can leave the mixture uncovered, but the fermenting smell will be unpleasant and you may have a problem with fruit flies. Be sure to label the jar with the tomato variety and the date the seeds were collected. Place the jar and juices out of direct sunlight in a cool spot. About 70 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal. Once a day you should gently stir the mixture. At the end of three days, the mixture should have an unpleasant fermenting odor and there may even be a bit of mold forming on the top. Pour the mixture into a large pitcher and add a considerable amount of water. If you let the mixture sit for a few seconds, the viable seeds will sink to the bottom while everything you don't want will float to the top. Carefully pour off everything that floated to the top, making sure not to lose the seeds. Repeat this process several times until all you have left is water and seeds. A 
Again, carefully pour off as much water as possible. Dump the seeds and remaining water into a strainer and rinse well. Place the seeds on a coffee filter or paper plate to dry. Avoid paper towel since the seeds tend to stick to it. The seeds will still tend to clump together so you will have to gently spread them apart. Again, place the seeds in a cool place out of direct sunlight with lots of air circulation. Every day during the drying process, go by the seeds and keep breaking apart the little clumps of seeds. After two or three days, the seeds will probably be dry and ready for storage. You can store the seeds in a small paper bag, or if you are sure they are absolutely dry, in a sealed plastic bag. I like to put my seeds in a glass bottle with a label inside. I also place several small desiccant packets inside to absorb possible moisture. Seeds are best stored in a cool, dry, dark place. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and a comment. Subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you in the next video.